welcome to Wednesday night midweek devotion. The people from Cedar Grove and Pittsburgh, we welcome you to this devotional. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time tonight. Thank you that we can pause and spend a, a few minutes with you. Thank you for the cross and for going to the cross in our place. Thank you for this Easter season. Help us to have the right respect and realize and think again exactly what happened through Holy Week and everything that you went through on the cross. Bless us, Father, during this time. We ask this in your name. Amen. I want to do something a little bit different, maybe to remind you all of a, a few tools that you can have in your tool chest on the table when you come just inside the church door on the left or the right there is uh, three books one is the upper room and this one here the bigger one for the us visually challenged and then our daily bread uh, there's two different sizes on that and then there is another little book during the seasons called the greatest love it's 10 Easter reflections from our daily bread. But I was looking on the website and found those and thought, well, maybe it would be a good idea to remind people. All, each of these three, uh, they have a little short devotion. And no, I said, notice I said a short devotion. These two here you can stick in your pocket and take with you. And this one here has been around for many, many years but there is still a lot of good information for a short private devotional. I'm going to read the one out of the upper room for November, November, <laughs> for March the, March the 24th. Uh, it's called Like Never Before. And I'm going to read Acts 3, 1 through 10 to start with. This is where Peter heals a crippled beggar. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. That's Acts 3, 1 through 10. Here is the upper room devotion to go along with that. The title of it is Never Like Never Before. And this is for... Lanawati Santoso from East Java, Indonesia. It says, I often think my family's situation will never change. We will never have our own home. Our brother will never recover from mental illness, and we will never be free from our financial difficulties. One day a friend said to me, Lana, you should pray like never before. I thought, what does he mean like never before? 
Should I begin praying with my eyes open rather than shut? Should I pray standing rather than sitting? Later I come to understand that, like never before, means I should pray with full trust in God. Rather than looking at my family situation as something that will never change, I should look to God who has the power to change everything. Like never before reminded me of the lame man at the temple gate, thinking he would never be able to walk, much less jump. Then one day he met Peter and John. Instead of giving the man money, Peter said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Immediately the man jumped to his feet and began to walk. The power of God and the faith and witness of Christ's followers, like Peter and John, can assure me that when I face a situation that I think will never change, I can pray like never before and put full faith in God whose power can change everything. And then she offers a one-sentence prayer. Almighty God, in difficult situations, help us to trust that you can do miracles like we have never seen or heard of before. That was Wednesday's short devotion from the upper room. I want to read this little Our Daily Bread. It's even shorter, I believe, but this is for March the 24th. It says something much bigger. More than 200 volunteers assisted October Brooks, a bookstore in Southampton, England, move its inventory to an address down the street. Helpers line the sidewalk and pass books down a human conveyor belt. Having witnessed the volunteers in action, the store employee said it was a really moving experience to see people helping. They wanted to be a part of something bigger. We can also be a part of something much bigger than ourselves. God uses us to reach the world with the message of His love. Because someone shared the message with us, we can turn to another person and pass it on. Paul compared this, the building of God's kingdom to growing a garden. Some of us plant seeds while some of us water the seeds. We are, as Paul said, co-workers in God's service. Each job is important. Yet all are done in the power of God's Spirit. By His Spirit, God enables people to thrive spiritually when they hear that He loves them and sent His Son to die in their place so that they can be free from their sin. Each job is important, yet all are done in the power of God's Spirit. By His Spirit, God enables people to thrive spiritually when they hear that He loves them and sent His Son to die in their place so that they can be free from their sin. God does much of His work on earth through volunteers like you and me. Although we're part of a community that's much bigger than any contribution we may make, we can help it grow by working together to share His love with the world. Do you see yourself as part of God's plan? As someone who works alone in your service for God? How does this affect the way in which you serve Him and others? Dear God, thank you for including me in your plan to tell everyone about your love.
Help me to represent you well with my words and actions. This Easter one is <clears throat> it's called I'm Alive. And there's a reference for Ephesians 2 5. Even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Laura Brooks, a 52 year old mother of two, didn't know it, but she was one of 14,000 people in 2011 whose name was incorrectly entered into the government database as dead. She wondered what was wrong when she stopped receiving disability checks and her loan payments and rent checks bounced. She went to the bank to clear up the issue, but the representative told her that her accounts had been closed because she was dead. Obviously, they were mistaken. The Apostle Paul was not mistaken when he said that the Ephesian believers were at one point dead, spiritually dead. They were dead in the sense that they were separated from God, enslaved to sin, and condemned under the wrath of God. What a state of hopelessness. Yet God in his goodness took action to reverse this condition for them and for us. The living God who brings the dead back to life poured out his rich mercy and great love by sending his son Jesus to this earth. Through Christ's death and resurrection, we're made alive. When we believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we go from death to life. Now we live to rejoice in his goodness and love. How does your new life in Christ show that your old self has died? Why does this encourage you to rejoice and shout praises to God. Scripture says we were dead in trespasses and sin. But because of the cross and Jesus shedding innocent blood to wash away our sins, then we are spiritually alive. If you get the chance when you come to church on Sunday and or you can come get him anytime you want to, three of these resources, just uh, a couple of little tools that you can have in your, your tool chest. They're free. They come to the church. There's one a day for the whole year. So keep that in mind and pick one up, and it's just a good prompt to take and set aside just a few minutes. Lord bless you, and I encourage you to read and pray over these next few days next week is holy week and there's a lot of things that go on during holy week but the most important thing is we are going to be celebrating the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ let's pray our father thank you for this time tonight thank you that you went to the cross in our place to make forgiveness possible. To make it possible for us to be spiritually alive and to be forgiven of our sin. Thank you, God, for your great mercy. Thank you for forgiving us and for continuing to forgive us and extend your mercy and thank you most of all that you're soon coming and we are going to go get to spend eternity with you in a place that you are preparing for us in heaven with you bless us father as we go out throughout the rest of this week and we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory we ask this in your name Amen.